Welcome to Booking Investment number three of uh, Bray Wyatt versus Bo Dallas. This is the build for Bo Dallas, and it'll probably be only one video. Unlike Bray Wyatt, who needed two videos to finish his booking and build so he would be able to face and be able to help put his brother over, Bo Dallas doesn't need as much because Bo Dallas, even though he has incredible talent, is not the same as Bray Wyatt. He just isn't. And I'm not against his younger brother. I am not. Because they're both great talents. But this is about Bo Dallas gaining something from his brother Bray, who's already heavily established and is at the top tier. So this is for Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas believe the well, the believe movement with Bo Leave movement was cool. But in this case of 2016, I think it's just not enough. So now I'm going to have a throwback for him because he is the grandson of Blackjack Mulligan, a relative of Barry Windham, and his dad is Erwin R. Scheister. So this is what I would do. I would throw him back to his grandfather and turn him into simply a destructive, evil cowboy. <coughs> Excuse me. This is how we'll book him. Right now, James Storm has a jacket, has a hat. In this case, I would do the same thing for a Bo Dallas. I wouldn't have him be just like his grandfather, Blackjack Mulligan, where sometimes he would just come out wearing just plain, <coughs> plain jack, just a jacket, and wearing, really looking like a full cowboy. Not unless he is in wrestling, then he would be dressed as one. In this case, he would be like a James Storm. Having a jacket, having a hat, I'm doing it backwards, and he would have a stick. If anyone's ever seen Clint Eastwood's Pale Rider, that's a pretty old movie. He would have that kind of character. A no-nonsense, very little talking at all. And that's how I would book him. Almost not doing any talking to zero talking for at least six months. Yes, I know that's kind of going far, but I'll explain right now. For Bo Dallas... He would carry a stick that would be originally the um, handle for a pickaxe. Like in Pale Rider, when Clint Eastwood beat the crap out of someone with a stick. So in this case, it would be the same thing. Every time Bo Dallas came to the ring, he would go to the timekeeper. He would take off his hat, take off his jacket, hand him the stick, get into the ring, and just destroy the opponent. No playing to the crowd. No wasted movement at all. And within three minutes, he defeats his opponent with very good grapple wrestling. That would be it. The guy would literally use a full Nelson to defeat his opponent. That's what he would use. A full Nelson. That's it. Then he wouldn't let the judge, not the judge, the, see I'm not feeling well saying the judge. The ref even raised his hand. He would raise it himself, walk to the timekeeper. Grabbed his hat, put it on. Grabbed his jacket, put it on. Grabbed his stick and walked away. That would be it. And for six months, no one would know what he wants. Because every interview someone tried to get him to talk, he wouldn't talk. He would just stare at them. Every time when he was forced to have a tag team match, either he would not even get into the ring with his opponent, with his partner, not opponent. He would, well, see it in disrespect. He wouldn't get in the ring to face the opponents, and he wouldn't even work with a tag partner. The tag partner would be saying, come on, let's go, I need to do this work, come on. And he just walk away. Sometimes his tag partners would actually confront him, and he used to stick and hit him in the head, or hit him in the stomach, and then walk away. And then he would have a match with them. And they're saying every single time in their, in their interviews with maybe Renee Young, with Jojo, who I just love, she's so cute. What the hell is this problem? We can't get a damn word out of him. He just stares at you. And every time they face him, he wouldn't talk to them. He would just beat the crap out of them and then head to the back with his stuff on. And then there would be one time that he would actually get in the ring with someone to be a partner with. And this would be Randall Keith Orton. Reason I would do it like that is because Randall Keith Orton is the son of Bob Orton and the grandson of Bob Orton Sr. Two guys that have been known to kind of have like a, a cowboy type of attitude. 
Well, Bob Orton Jr. did. So he literally would wait for that. That's what he's been wanting. And he did the match with Randy Orton. He actually won the match without even tagging Randy Orton in. And then when the ref wanted to hold both their hands up, he wouldn't let the ref hold his hand up. He just faced Bob Orton. Well, Randall Keith Orton, my mistake. I'm getting the things a little mixed up. He would face him face to face and said, I'm here for you. Get ready. Face to face. Then he walks out of the ring. Randall Keith Orton tries to RKO him. He doesn't even give him that chance. He gets his ass into a full Nelson and knocks him out with it. And he would finally, after six months, do this. He would do an interview. Finally. It would be with Michael Cole, of course, because he's supposedly the voice of the WWE. And he would say, you want to know why I haven't said anything? There's been no reason. I've been waiting. Waiting for Randall Keith Orton to come back. Because Bob Orton Sr. is the one I want. Bob Orton Jr. is the one I want, and he's the one I want because you play like you were cowboys. My grandfather was a real cowboy, a true cowboy that can kick true ass. And I'm of his blood. I am a true cowboy. I can destroy you. I know how to truly care about knowing what it means to be a bad guy. You're not a bad guy. You're nothing. Your grandfather's nothing, your father is nothing, and you're nothing. I'm going to prove that the Orton family's nothing compared to the Blackjack Mulligan family and the Wyndham family. And that is when the feud happens. And for three months, there would be a feud between him and Randall Keith Orton. But there would be no real matches. Every time they met one another, there would just be a fight upon a fight. Every time when they were about to go into the ring, either in tag teams or in singles competition, they never really get a chance to fight one another, like regular wrestling, because both of them want to kill one another, either using ropes, using cowbells, using sticks. There's no street fight. They're just bringing them to the ring, or they keep ambushing each other in the hallways or in the street. The best thing would be for Randall Keith Orton to go home and see Bob Orton Sr., his dad, and guess what? Bo Dallas is at the front lawn. Kind of like what happened before with John Cena and Randall Keith Orton and Triple H and Randall Keith Orton. I keep saying to Keith because I really want to make this very important. Randall, or Randy Orton, <laughs> I keep saying Randall. Randy would basically put... Bo Dallas over with just this situation at, at Survivor Series. Clearly, at Survivor Series, around the same time as his brother would be dealing with, with basically a John Cena. During that same show, he destroyed Randy Orton. And that would be when he would be a top tier competitor. Now, I hope you enjoy this Bo Dallas build. I know I can make it more bigger. And I will add a little bit more for the final conflict between him and his older brother, Bray Wyatt. But you're going to have to watch for the last Book and the Wrestler episode number four. Have a good day and have a good night.